Hello, I'm Royal Seely, aka Mininet, and welcome to my channel. A lot of what I focus on is highlighting the pieces in my wardrobe, talking about releases that I'm excited about, and about events that I go to that are more Lolita in nature. I also talk about other things, it just kind of depends on what I want to talk about that day. So today we are here to go over my Lolita fashion wardrobe. It has grown quite a bit and also changed quite a bit since last year. Last year, I was about a year and a half into my journey, so now we are about two and a quarter or so. And I'm really excited to show the ways that that has changed. Let's move into what I've currently got in here. So my Lolita wardrobe, as it is right now, does not have its own dedicated space, at least officially. Although unofficially, it's almost this entire closet. I have some of my work clothes and things like that pushed more this way as I've expanded this side of my wardrobe um, more so in the past year. Today what I'm wearing is the Whipped Magic Switching JSK, aka Radioactive Cupcakes, by Angelic Pretty. And I thought it'd be really fun to mess around more with the sax cording that um, I did earlier in the year. So the first main piece that we are going to be talking about is an oldie. It is Metamorphosis Self Fabric Pin Tuck JSK in the lavender. It has a different shape than I'm used to. It's a little bit more A-line. And because this is, I believe, a piece from um, 2005 or so, the petticoat area is a bit tighter. Um, I don't mind though. I really like it. This is really good for casual everyday wear. These two pieces right here, all of the bows that you see are detachable. And this is one of those uh, pieces where I'm really starting to appreciate the details in some of the older releases and some of the newer ones too where we've got pin tucking down the front and ruffles on the side as well as the bottom. Following that, we have Angelic Pretty's Princess Cat Peplum JSK. If you recall from last year, I had the peplum cut here as well as the frill cut, and I ended up just keeping the peplum. Overall, I find that it is a lot more comfortable to wear. The shirring is a little bit bigger, and having these detachable bows is something that I can mix and match with other pieces in my wardrobe, as well as this removable peplum overskirt. It's able to be corded in a couple of ways just because of all these add-ons. Next up in the lavender and purple section of my wardrobe is Metamorphosis Pink Lemonade Low Cut Release. Now this one's pretty unique in that it's the only low waist JSK that I have. The first time I put it on I felt a little bit like an alien just because I'm not used to seeing um, the poof start so much lower on um, and having it being so slim higher up. Even in this JSK you can see that the petticoat starts a bit below the underbust region. So it's much more high-waisted than this low-waist JSK. It also has this super cute removable bow with a daisy on it. I do have that, although it's in another part of my wardrobe right now. And my favorite thing about this piece would be the heart-shaped lemons on it, as well as these little mints, so you're getting a little mint lemonade action. On top of that, we have these really cute bumblebees that are just happily working away. Uh, yeah, I really like this piece. My only complaint about it is that the shirring in the back is weird. So normally when you get shirring on a piece, it goes straight down to the waistline or wherever the waist is made for that particular piece. And because this is a low waist, I would have expected the shirring to go all the way down to the low waist. However, I'm not sure how well it'll show since I have these ribbons in the corset lacing. The shirring on this piece stops where you would expect for a high-waisted cut to stop. 
meaning from here to here, there is no shirring at all. And that's not as ideal. So I do have plans to eventually replace this piece either with the frill JSK, which is full shirring, or I believe at least full back shirring. Um, the shirring is more evenly distributed or the skirt, which has a lot of elasticity as well. I am on the fence about whether or not I will keep the lavender colorway as my preferred colorway. And this is just because when it comes to main pieces I'm collecting, I'm focusing more on blues and mints. But it is nice to have a different color in my wardrobe. Next to that piece, we start with the greens of my wardrobe, the greens and the blues. And the first one we see here is Metamorphosis Profusion of Flowers and Nostalgia OP. And this piece has a lot of really cool things going for it. So it's my first Wallalita print and it uses a color combination I don't often see. It has in the official colorway the opal green as well as this purple. And I usually don't see green and purple together, which I thought was a really fun and funky way to do things. I also really like these short sleeves, this ruffle sleeve. It's really comfortable and it doesn't press in any type of way. We also have a removable collar with it and when you lift it up, there's this square neckline and it reminds me of some of the dresses I would see my grandma wear, uh, which is very nostalgic as well. Profusion of flowers and nostalgia. And then it also had these detachable arm sleeves so I can wear it long sleeve, short sleeve. I find it super versatile that way. I also like seeing the way that the people at Metamorphose cord this piece just because it gives me a lot of guidance while Alita not being something I'm particularly familiar in. So seeing them cord it with socks and other pieces that are not necessarily law specific but still work with my current wardrobe is what makes this piece a very comfortable happy addition to my wardrobe and next up in my wardrobe is this lovely green axis femme poetic skirt in the law library it indicates that it was listed for sale on the kawaii side of axis femme however the print itself has details saying axis femme poetic so that's also how it's labeled on law library and when I first learned that this was, well, first let me say the name. So this is Axis Femme Poetic slash Kawaii, and it is their sweet Halloween skirt. And there's a lot of really adorable details of cats and also graveyards and spooky, creepy houses. I got this at KCON for what I feel like is a steal. It is so comfortable and I really hope to continue getting a lot of use out of it, especially for more casual, easy to wear uh, courting days. Following that is Metamorphose attempts to see their patissier in the forest bustle JSK in green. This was the first piece of Lolita that I bought. I pre-ordered it and after that I went to work on filling out my wardrobe. I usually don't wear it with this removable collar or the matching headpiece, although I did recently, which was really a fun way to revisit what originally inspired me to join the fashion. As a first piece, I will say this was a bit harder to cord just because there's a lot of print happening on top of this lovely tartan plaid situation. That means it's a bit busier, so I have to be a bit more creative when I figure out how to cord this piece. Um, but obviously I love it. It's very comfortable and I like that it's one of those pieces that doesn't need a zipper. You can just pull it on over your head with the shirring. Up next we have another solid colored piece. This is Baby the Starshine Bright Snow Dot Ribbon JSK. I got this and it had a little bit of damage but luckily I was able to work with it and get out some of the issues it had before. This was also my first experience with chest corset lacing. I think there's a lot of really beautiful ways to cord this piece since it is solid. So I've done pink so far, which has been my favorite, although obviously white. And any other color that pairs well with mint goes well with this JSK. This middle part here, this chest ribbony frilly part, 
actually is detachable and tucks behind the ribbon itself. I haven't actually worn it without this little frilly piece yet. Um, so maybe that will be a nice challenge for me to work with this year. I really like the texture of this. It has this like raised dot situation for the snow dot um, pattern, I suppose. And the ribbons that are in the bottom of this JSK have this very sea foamy minty tool, which is a nice fun pop of color on an all green piece. Funny story about this one is that I had bought this blouse off of JP Mercari and unknowns to me was actually the blouse that goes with this series but what I find very funny is that the mints don't necessarily match so yeah so following that we have baby the star shine bright and their kumia sweet ice cream one so this is the one cut meaning it is a high waist but not more of an underbust it has more chest details like this dripping mint uh, ice cream, which I find really fun. It also has this really cute lace, and it looks like little hearts, but it also reminds me of sprinkles or dollops of whipped cream. There's a lot of colors in this JSK, meaning I can wear a lot of different um, things with it, and I feel like it will take me a long time to get to all the possible color and cording combinations with this piece. I also really like the scallop hem. That tends to be my favorite part of the various Baby the Starshine Bright cuts is the scallop hem. Following that piece, we have Baby the Starshine Bright and their Kumia Floating Sky Tea Party JSK in the Saks Blue. There was a restock of this piece early in 2023 as I had missed out on the previous reservations all throughout last year. So I was really excited to see this come up. It had made its way on my dream dress wish list. I just didn't expect it to get restocked or come so soon. This is the first cut. And again, we're seeing this sort of scallopy, interesting chest detail. This has so many colors in it, but it's all very pastel. So it feels very light, very airy, like I'm up in the clouds, enjoying a floating sky tea party, if you will. I wore this for my birthday and it was very fun. I'm considering wearing it again for my birthday this year. Now we're gonna take a brief break from the blues and the greens and talk about this lovely yellow metamorphose skirt. It is Rabbit's Cafe. I got it from my friend who also got the matching JSK. And I believe this originally came with bloomers, but they're a very crafty individual and they turned it into a matching head bow set for us. So this is a fun piece I can wear with my friend as well as being one of the only yellow pieces in my wardrobe. It's also my only other skirt, so it's really nice. Uh, it holds a lot of poof. A lot of petticoat can fit under here. And I feel like it's an underrated print. So much so that I bought it in the Mint OP. This OP is so cute, it's so comfortable. It has shirring in the front and in the back. Um, it's, it's super versatile, I don't need to wear a blouse under it, but I could definitely wear a pink long sleeve blouse under this. It has these bows which are removable on top of this ruffled neckline and these detachable neckties as well, which I really like the versatility of that. The only thing is I will have to edit this OP a little bit just because the elastic in the sleeves is a bit tight despite there being so much fabric. So I'm probably going to replace that with a longer piece of elastic and go from there. This is what I wore for a six hour drive to the Teco convention this past summer. Up next is Baby the Star Shine Bright, Kumia's Sweet Chocolate. JSK. I bought this from a friend. They had gotten another cut of this release, same colorway, and this past November we were finally able to twin it together, which was quite an exciting time. I really like having pieces that I can twin with my friends. It allows for a lot more enjoyment. Um, that being said, there's a lot of really gorgeous colors to work 
with here. There's a lot of pink. There's almost a purpley pink, which would be really fun to do. Um, the chocolate, obviously, and the sax bows. A lot of versatility here. It's also, it's just very comfortable. Now, when Metamorphose first announced that they were doing a Wonder Card slash Card Playing Kitty re-release, I immediately pre-ordered this sax blue colorway. What really drew me to this piece was the tuxedo bodice, as well as all the asymmetrical features and patternings throughout the dress. So in the front, we have a bustle that's only on one side and is alternating the same colors that we see here on the tuxedo front. And the waist ties for this piece are also dual sided as well. I thought that was really cool. And when I pre-ordered this piece, originally I had it with the idea of going to Royal Vegas Retreat whenever that does come back, or if it comes back, um, just because it has cards so it's easy to do that poker theme, as well as a more magician-y feeling when you get this type of tuxedo bodice. Now I did pre-order this piece as soon as it came out in December of 2022. I believe it arrived in June of 2023. Um, but in the meantime, I also went to work on the secondhand markets because whenever a re-release is announced, usually older versions of that series tend to pop up for a decent price. Which is how I ended up with the original release of Card Playing Kitty in the apron cut JSK Ivory. I went for Ivory despite all of my sacks and mint in here just because if I was already getting a sax JSK, I wanted to see what the other colorways had to offer, and I'm really happy I did. This apron especially is gorgeous as it has metamorphose embroidered on the front. These little teeny tiny heart-shaped pockets with little ribbons on them. I don't think much could fit in there, but they are cute. The way that the apron attaches is to these four buttons on the front, which are the different suit of cards. So we've got diamonds, hearts, spades, clubs, as well as tying in the back as well, which makes this very versatile because now not only do I have a metamorphose embroidered apron that I can style with any of my other pieces, it also immediately allows for two different ways that I could wear this piece. After that, we're going to be transitioning out of my mint and blue portion of my wardrobe and here we are with a yellow palette cleanser. It's Angelic Pretty's Sweet Ribbon Strawberry OP. It is super cute. I was very worried about OPs in general, but I'm happy to say that the elastic of the cuff is very, is very accommodating, at least for me. That's usually what trips me up with OPs, so I was really happy that I didn't have to worry about that here. I like all the over-the-top bows, both on the bodice here um, and on the sleeves. We've got a really cute ribbon running along the hem of the skirt with strawberry lace at the bottom. It's really nice, easy, light, and very good for summer and springtime. So there we have it, Angelic Pretty's Sweet Ribbon Strawberry OP. Following that will be a really familiar piece if you're familiar with my channel. And that is Baby the Star Shine Bright Ribbon Ribbon Gelato, the 2023 re-release. It has this gorgeous rose lace that Baby, I feel, is known for, as well as really interesting construction details like this row of pin tucks down here and these sides of ruffles. What I really appreciate about this re-release is that not only do we have the halter sundress necktie, but there's also these detachable shoulder straps. That way, if you need the additional support on your shoulders, you can use this in addition to the necktie. Yeah, this piece is super cute, and if you're interested in knowing more about my thoughts and my courting, I would definitely recommend watching my video on it. Speaking of one-off colors, I have Baby the Starshine Bright Heart Marble Chocolate and Sugar Coated Cookies Tiered JSK in brown. This is my first experience with a brown main piece. Originally, I was kind of concerned. I wasn't sure how I would feel about wearing it, um, but it's so beautiful. 
There are so many gorgeous details in here. It has a lot of swirly designs, which I really appreciate. You've got cookies and roses, so I feel like it really plays with that sweet and classic style. I'm really excited to wear this main piece out and about. I haven't had the chance to yet, but I know once I do, it'll be a really fun time as there's a lot of colors to work off of. And I was also fortunate enough to get the head bow in this as well. So this next piece I'll be sharing is one that's very special to me. It is my first and only ultimate dream dress. When I saw it on Lollibrary, it's a piece from 2003, so I figured my chances of finding it were going to be pretty low. It also doesn't have any shirring, so even lower in my mind uh, were the chances that it would fit me. But very early into 2023, it has this shantung fabric, and on top of it is a flocking pattern that I'm obsessed with. It doesn't really show up all that well in pictures, although I think it really is stunning in person. Um, we're able to get some of those details. So it's a black piece with black flocking. Um, there's definitely subtleties in the design in that aspect, which I really like. And I think once I got this piece and I put it on and it fit, it really kickstarted my interest in more gothically inclined pieces which you will see now in the later part of my wardrobe, although it will still be very sweet focused. So there we have it, Metamorphosis Bridal OP in black. Now this next dress is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. It is on Lollibrary and it has the lacy tag, which can be more literal in that there's a lot of lace, but it also tends to be put on releases that are very funny in a way where it's like, ooh, uh, is it Ina? Is it classy? Who can say? But I'm very excited to show you guys dress number two from Metamorphose. So I mentioned that this has the lacy tag on Wallybrary, and they were not joking. There is so much lace on this piece. It's definitely a lot longer than I'm used to, and it has a lot of really interesting patterning and just buckets and buckets of lace. They did not skimp on this lace. It also has these unique crisscrossy type straps that are hanging from the dress. Usually I have it folded over uh, just to reduce putting any additional straps on it. There's all of these removable detachable bows as well. And if you're wondering what drew me to this piece, I will share it with you. So I mentioned before that Bridal OP was my ultimate dream dress. And the flocking pattern in particular that are, is on that dress is what I'm obsessed with. I think it's a really beautiful piece, as, of course, but the artistry of that flocking pattern is what catches my fancy. And this is a piece that has the exact same flocking pattern. It's also the most extravagant dress from Meta that has that pattern. I also just feel like the naming of this piece is funny because it's Dress 02. Uh, there is a Dress 01 if you're wondering. I wouldn't have even known this piece existed if a good friend of mine who knows I'm obsessed with this pattern didn't share um, the listing for this piece and for a white piece. So they got the white version of this JSK, and I got the black version, and I'm really excited to cord this with them. It's definitely going to have to be for a high tea or very fancy occasion, because this is really not... I mean, I guess it's up to you what you want to do, but this does not scheme like, let me walk around the city or go to an arcade. You definitely could, but it's extreme. This is an extreme dress. And I feel like the way I want to cord it to highlight that would have to be pretty extreme as well. And the other really cool thing about dress number two is that it comes with these little arm sleeves that has two detachable bows on it. Um, and the cording of the shoot itself is a blouseless, because it's a wedding dress, I suppose, blouseless coordination. Ooh, 
and the coordinating of this piece that we see in the official scans on Law Library show this being blouseless for the wedding theme, I suppose, and these lovely arm sleeves, I don't know, but I just think they're so cool. They make me very nostalgic for um, my time in middle school. So yeah, I also didn't think about the repercussions of putting this on over top of all my rings and my wrist cuffs, so this will be really fun to take off. So that was dress number two. Yes, it's extra. It's extra for the occasion of weddings and whatever else you feel like wearing it to. Here we have Twinkle Dirty by Metamorphose Tends to Be. It is their underbust cut. What keeps me attracted to this is the unique aspect of this underbust. I get to show off a lot of my blouses that have really beautiful detachable bows, columns of ruffle and other lace details that otherwise would be covered up by a regular JSK cut of this piece. I also like that it has this detachable bow that hangs between the shoulder blades. Following that is Angelic Pretty's MTO of the French Cafe Switching JSK in black. I was really excited for this MTO. I actually pre-ordered it. Uh, the first time I wore Lolita out was to a local French cafe, so I thought it would be really fitting. I also like that it has this gooseneck petal, as well as eggs. I love eating eggs and various breakfast pastries. Now, if you follow me on Tumblr, you'll know that initially I was a bit crushed by this release because I found that the eyelet lacing on the bottom felt very rushed and unedited. There's a lot of stray threads poking out all throughout. I believe all of the AP embroidered parts have at least one thread poking out on it. And it leads it to looking really fuzzy and unfinished, especially when the original release doesn't necessarily have this issue. I was feeling really down on it just because this is the first main piece I bought direct from AP and then for the quality of the lace it was just kind of really disappointing and then I had an even worse back-to-back -back where I decided to give AP another chance firsthand and I bought a head bow from them only for it to come dirty so because of that it really took me a while before I wanted to wear this piece I was just a bit heartbroken from what could have been um, and it's a detail too where like uh, no one else is going to notice it but as the person who owns it and compared to my other JSKs it was just a piece of oversight that I felt did a lot to like hurt my first experience buying AP new. I still think this is cute. I love this print. And I like how vibrant it is, so it'll probably be in my wardrobe for a really long time um, now that I've come to terms with the eyelet detail of the lace. This is another piece that is new to me, and I haven't worn it out and about yet, but I am very excited to. It is Baby the Star Shine Bright, my sweet mate Kumia's Honey Hunt Judy JSK in black. What I really like about this piece is the bears on the bottom with the glass jars. These glass jars of honey look so delicious and beautiful and dainty. I really like the way glass tends to look in prints. It also has various types of honey listed on the bottom border here underneath of the bears. So different types like orange blossom, clover, and so on, which is a really nice touch. My significant other is also getting really into making mead and has been for a while now. And if you're unfamiliar, mead is a type of beverage that is made using honey. So it felt like a really nice JSK that um, reminded me of my sweetie. Here's a piece that I didn't think I was going to get. It is Metamorphose Tempthyphy's Sweet Spooky Halloween JSK in the baby doll cut and black. So I originally saw this piece on the runway in Teco 2023. I thought it was super cute, especially this cut of it. 
I usually don't like the way that baby doll cuts look on me, but something about this massive bow and the way that it folds, I found to be super cute. It has these little metal stars on the bottom of the giant chest bow, and while you can remove it, I don't think I will just because I really like it. Something fun about this piece is that a lot of my friends in the comm got the orange colorway in the round JSK, so we all got it at different times, and we are making plans to do a Halloween in spring. That way we can all wear it together. And I'm really looking forward to that. I know this was kind of like a controversial uh, release just because a lot of people were not a fan of the way the print looked, but I think it looks a lot better in person and also it's cute to me. We have the dress that I wore for last year's Lolita Fashion Wardrobe 2022, and that is going to be Baby the Starshine Bright Ribbon Milky Sugar 2009 Black X White. And you'll notice it's on its hanger despite there being shirred straps. I did that just for this video. It's going to soon be folded back over. Uh, I spoke about this a bit last year. This was my first experience in old school styling and because of how shirred this is, it's so very comfortable. Uh, what drew me to it is it reminded me a bit of when I was really into My Chemical Romance's Black Parade and the outfits that they wore for that. So this was kind of a call back to my emo self from middle school and I love it. It's so cute. I'm also really glad that they re-released it because now I can twin with more people in my comm who got the re-release. Up next is kind of a surprise pick for my wardrobe. When I bought it, people that knew me were surprised, and I definitely get why. Last year, I tried Gothic Lolita using And Romeo's Black JSK. It was similar to the way the famous pink white one was, only it was all black. And when I put it on, I wasn't a huge fan of it, so I thought maybe Gothic Lolita is not for me. And then I got Bridal OP, which was leaning a little more gothic and made me have to get some more gothic classic type accessories. And right before KCON this past September, October of 2023, Moi Moi re-released their Iron Gate JSK. So I ended up getting that in white, and I talk about this a lot more in my video on the Iron Gate JSK re-release. Uh, but the reason why I went for this is, well, I just find it pretty, and I really wanted to have at least one thing from Moitier. I felt like because it was white, maybe I could wear some of my colorful blouses and have an easier time of tying it in there. I have since learned that all of the sweet features of those blouses don't really mesh with the gothic nature of it. But, surprise to me, I did have some meta blouses that work with it. And I just think it's really pretty. Um, I like the way it feels. I like the way the fabric lays. So, yeah, it's really cute. I have a video on it if you want to learn more about my thoughts and feelings on the Moitié Iron Gate re-release. Part of my Lolita journey this year and last year has been looking at old GLBs. I find it really helpful to read about the different releases that were coming up at the time since I wasn't really around Lolita at all during that period, and it also gets me familiar with those very iconic prints that previously I would not have known about, as well as styling tips and ways I can use inspiration from brand shoots as well as street snaps. And in that mix was the Cherry Ribbon JSK from Baby the Starshine Bright. This was for a summer issue. When I can, I choose to read the issues that correspond with that season or the one that's coming up. So when I saw this, I immediately knew I wanted it. Originally, I thought I wanted the other JSK cut, which has this more sailory, off-the-shoulder um, addition. 
However, I ended up finding this new with tag and I couldn't say no. There's also the way that this one has shirring, so I know for sure it would fit me a lot better than that other version. And I definitely don't think I have finished courting this to its full potential. Ideally, I would like to get a sailor blouse and try courting it that way, but it's something so cute. Bit of a story for this piece is that the first outing that I wore this to, I hadn't washed it yet because as I mentioned, it was new with tag. And that day it downpoured. And this is an older baby release and I didn't really think about the fears of bleeding. And I had my first instance of being out and about in Lolita and having something bleed. Now it was very mild. It was the area around the cherries where some of the red started to come down. But even more tricky and what they don't tell you is that you also need to be worried about the black and navy. And I say don't tell you, but they if you read enough guides online, they do talk about black and navy, but the biggest offender is usually the red. So I was seeing the most bleed from these stripes here. And luckily enough, I threw it in the wash and I believe it was just excess pigment, at least for the most part. So if I had thrown it in the wash before I went out, it probably would have been fine. Most of the bleeding from the reds from the blue has since gone out after that initial wash. There is some remaining, but you really wouldn't notice it unless you were already aware of where it was. So if you do happen to find this piece and it's never been washed before, be mindful that it could have some extra dye. Something super cute about this JSK is these really puffy cherries on the lace. I just think it's so cute. This JSK is adorable. One day I am going to cord this with open-toed sandals just the same way as Baby corded it in their original DLB photo shoot for it. Following that, we have the transition between the white part of my wardrobe and the pink part of my wardrobe. Pink is not my favorite color, despite wearing it right now, uh, but I do have some pink, so here we go. We have the Metamorpho Sweet Rabbits Bustle JSK. This is the ivory colorway, which you can see has a lot of pinks on it. It has dusty pink in particular, although there are brighter pinks throughout. And between all the fruits and the sweets raining down from the bodice into the border print, it's just a really well-balanced JSK that I can wear with a lot of different colors. I actually saw for the first time someone else wearing this print in the OP cut, and it's just so beautiful every time I see it. Um, I think this is a print that I don't see a lot of people talking about, but that should be talking about it anyway. Now we have, from Baby the Star Shine Bright, Doki Doki Heart Strawberry Magic JSK 2. And I think this is the red and white version. I'm not really sure, um, but I am sure that it's very cute. I really like these donuts at the bottom, the different heart-shaped donut. It's just cute. It's so cute from top to bottom. Here we have another instance of a brand apron that came with a JSK. This one is detachable and it has designated buttons to attach to in the front. It has these little pockets. I think they're a little bigger than the Card Playing Kitty Meta JSK's apron. Yeah, and it has this big like floppy lace here. I like how big it is. I feel like you get to see all the different details of it as it is a more cloth fabric-y type of lace. And honestly, I probably don't wear it as much as I should. That brings us to our final piece from my wardrobe, and that is Baby the Star Shine Bright Kuma Kumia's Marine Island 2 JSK in pink. This was the first JSK that I tried on at home, as I mentioned in the beginning. I had pre-ordered Patissiere in the Forest by Metamorphose, but it wasn't going to come in for at least a few more months. 
So in the meantime, I ended up getting this really beautiful marine JSK from Baby the Starshine Bright. I've also said that pink isn't really my favorite color, so one day I would really like to change this one for the mint or the sax or navy colorways. Probably the mint, although the sax one is really pretty too. Um, yeah, so this is not a particular colorway of the dress I see myself owning forever, but I do see myself having this release in general in my wardrobe. Because of this lavender sand, it cords really well with lavender, and it's just a really nice, well-balanced piece, in my opinion. So there we have it, my wardrobe from 2023. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're interested, I do a lot of showcasing of specific pieces of my wardrobe, talking about various things that I'm interested in, as well as events for Lolita Fashion that I've gone to, and my experiences at them. So if you're interested in that, you can subscribe or you can find me on Tumblr or on Instagram at Royal Sealy. Once again, I am Royal Sealy, aka Minionette. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful Lolita-filled 2024.